think we got you now, brother. How are you? Uh, I mean, now can you hear me? We got you. Yeah, we got you. We were hoping this wasn't the same internet as last time. Oh yeah, that was a disaster last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no lie. <laughs> Tommy had to wear Tommy had to wear you like a backpack and just carry you through the whole segment. Oh, there he goes. Oh man, I like that smile though. Great smile, John. <laughs> Johnny, I think we got a little bit of lag on you, brother, but uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll keep it going here. Uh, Johnny, wanted to, to talk to you, obviously, about your time at UF, but before we do that, we know that you're hosting a big event on Thursday in Gainesville. So tell us a little bit more about what you have going on. For sure. Well, I already got my visor on. I'm ready to roll, but we got an awesome event planned in Gainesville. Um, it's the event to be at for the spring game. So uh, my foundation is personally hosting a spring game tailgate. Uh, this Thursday, April 14th from 3.30 to 7.30. Uh, it's benefiting pediatric oncology at UF Health Shands Hospital. Uh, we're hosting all the former players, too. We're going to have guys from uh, Spurrier's era. He'll be there personally signing autographs and taking photos, all the way up to some of the more recents, like Kyle Trask, Brandon Powell. Um, you know, we'll have a ton of guys there. And uh, we got open bars, barbecue, DJ, amazing silent auction items that we're right there on the airwalk so you guys got to register for sure johnny where do we go to register uh the easy thing to do is just go to all my social media handles uh if you go to facebook at johnny townsend foundation the link to the uh, general mission is there or if you go to my twitter at johnny townsend one it's pinned up there right at the top with the link and on instagram if you go to johnny townsend foundation you will find all the links in the bio and also pinned to some of the posts so yeah, Johnny, yeah so when, Johnny, you've you started this foundation. Um, was it either your last year at UF or right after you left UF? Um, and, and what what was I guess what was your driving force to to really get into this and, and to give back to to this community in Gainesville? Sure. Well, I originally had planned to launch it going into my senior season, and I wanted to tie some sort of statistical um, data to a give like a giving commitment. Um, but, you know, the NCAA at the time did not even allow stuff like that, even for charitable reasons. Uh, so they shot it down and I had to wait until I signed away my eligibility to even start a foundation. Um, but that all started NCAA with the, loves, loves the kids. Good yeah. it on the NCAA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, so, uh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there was a community service program uh, called Goodwill Gators that they had on campus there. And uh, they would kind of pop us out in the community and we do little you know initiatives here and there. And, and I got to meet some of the people at Shands and I saw some of the kids there on a, you know, um day by day basis and got to get them got to get to know them on a first name basis and um i wanted to use my platform and do something to help i thought it'd be a waste if i didn't so that's kind of where it all started uh, johnny so obviously i know you're hosting this event is this something that you guys are going to try to carry at all through the season or are you guys going to host any other events that, that people that might not be able to make it up to gains on thursday uh to be on the lookout for Unfortunately, this is the only one we're doing in Gainesville this year. Okay. Um, this is going to be a uh, every year type of event. This is the first year we're doing it. Um, it's already, you know, gained so much traction and so much support from uh, you know various institutions around the university. Um, it's going to be an official event every spring. So if you can't make it this year, uh, for sure you're going to be there next year, and it'll be even bigger. But uh, what we are doing that's really cool is we're setting up an online bidding site uh, for people that can't make it to check out some of the auction items. Uh, Cause there's some really, really cool stuff. We got Traeger grill packages. We got dining packages, at Spurs gridiron grill, and there's some Cadillacs in there. We have like a one of one. Cadillacs. Uh, we got a one of one Heisman trophy football signed by 20 Heisman winners. All the mm -hmm. 48 Heisman winners are on there. And me and coach Spurrier's foundation are co-auctioning it off and, sp and splitting it amongst us. So um, it's going to be amazing. That's dope. Um, it's dope that you're working with Spurrier as well. How's that working? I see you got a Spurrier advisor on Oh, yeah, that's, that's why I had to rock it going into this. Um, yeah, he's been great. You know, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill has been a huge supporter of my foundation, especially this event. Um, those guys have been awesome. So they're, you know, trying to really keep that Gator community together, especially around the alumni, and um, they've been very supportive. So it's going to be a cool auction item for sure. Johnny, you'll, you'll tweet that out when you, uh, when you get the link up. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now, brother. Sorry, your internet's yeah. lagging a little bit. I get it. I was in that that spot for for about a year. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see all the links, and um, I'm gonna be blasting it out to all the Gator clubs. So anybody that's you know in a city that's affiliated with the Gator club, they'll get all the information. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tweet the links, uh, post on Instagram, and and just be sending it all over the place. So, 
Awesome. Well, Johnny, hopefully we can we can get a couple more questions with you. Um, everybody, make sure you, you check it out. You can visit uh, Johnny Townsend's foundation at uh, at johnnytownsendsports.com and hit the Johnny Townsend Foundation button there. Um, Johnny, I know when we last had John with your brother, uh, you know, we were able to talk with you a little bit about you know how you committed um, to UF and uh, what your time was like and everything else. And I think we got a, a lot of that big stuff out of the way. Um, but want to just talk to you about you know some more things about your your time at UF. You were obviously there at a pretty uh, important time and pretty important transition time for for UF. Um, want to just kind of get your thoughts on on you being around the UF program now um, and kind of what you're seeing, you know, with the transition that, that Florida is now making from from Dan Mullen to, to Billy Napier and, and how that might correlate with what some of the things that you saw during your time. For sure. Well, if we've seen more transitions than I think we've seen in the last couple of decades at Florida in yeah. terms of coaching. Um, yeah, I've been through two different coaching changes. And when I left, there was a third when Mullen came in. So, um but, you know, it's always tough to tell in the offseason. Um, you know, Coach Napier's won the offseason, in my opinion. Um, he's recruiting well. He's got an amazing staff together. Um, he's got the respect of the team. Uh, me and Tommy went up there about a month and a half ago and toured the brand-new facility. Uh, they're supposed to have all the guys in there this summer. Lost you again, brother. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now. So we lost you. <laughs> yeah, we lost you out where you were talking about going to visit the uh, the new facility. Yeah, yeah. Me and Tommy got the chance to go back. Just kill the video for right now, um, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Kill it'll the probably, video. It'll probably help us with the, uh, the screen. You just lagging a little bit. Just, yeah, the video is fine. Just kill the video. And it should be should work fine. Just kill the video. Yeah. 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 There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got yeah. you. Is that a little better? That's a, yeah, that's yeah, a hell of yeah. a lot better. Awesome. Yeah, I'll just keep it. Um, all right, yeah. We got up there two months ago, got to tour the new facility. Uh, they said they're going to have all the guys in there this summer. So, you know, like I said, the infrastructure is there. I mean, we're going to have a world-class facility, uh, which is something Florida's been needing for a while to get that recruiting edge. And, and um, you know, I was saying how Coach Napier's already got the respect of the team and everybody's buying in, and and um, they're doing everything they can to restore that winning tradition. So. What do you, you know, think about? To, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. You good? Go I, ahead. I talked to a couple of the old baseball players when they when the new baseball stadium came up. Um, any jealousy? Walk, come back on campus and, and seeing all of these like toys and, and things that these guys are gonna have, and you're like, hey, that would have been nice when I was here. One hundred percent, man. I was there in the Stone Ages. We didn't even have an indoor <laughs> facility. Um, my first two years, we used to have to. Uh, they wheel out this old ca uh, cart of shoes, some Air Monarchs and whatever else they had, and we throw Ooh, them on. The, 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 air, the, air, the Air Dad lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd go in the O'Connell Center and do walkthroughs, and that was our practice. Mm. And we'd get rained out several times a week during camp, and mm -hmm. uh, we were always up in there. So, um, yeah, man, just seeing, you know, going from not even having an indoor facility to seeing uh, cryotherapies and all this crazy stuff they're going to have in their locker room, it's, it's unbelievable. I remember introducing Antonio Morrison to uh, a booster that I knew um, at the senior bowl. And I was like, Hey, this booster wants to meet you. Um, can I, can I introduce you guys? He goes, he's a booster. I go, yeah. He, Antonio Morrison, this probably makes sense. If you know him walks over and goes, Hey man, we need more money. We don't even have hot water in the facility. I like it. Yeah. He was like, we don't even have hot water in the facility. I'm like, I'm like Antonio, that's not even you say hello. <laughs> you were just like, yo, you're a booster. You have money. We need it. And I was like, okay. All right, Antonio. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was uh, that was that was that was, that was in my Antonio Morrison Senior Bowl story. That's great. That's great. Um, what do they have anything for um, former players coming back? Like, um, they're like the baseball stadium has like a former player locker room area. Like, if guys come back to you know hit before spring training or something like that, um, they've got a place to go. Is there anything for you guys there? They do. Yeah, they got a whole former player locker room for us, um, oh, cool. which is which is unbelievable. So they're doing really everything they can to kind of, you know, bring the alumni back together because they, they really see the value in, um, you know, what that gives back to the university as a whole, uh, not just to the football team. Um, it's a cultural thing. And so, you know, with them doing that, they're going to have so many guys, especially NFL guys that want to come back and train in the offseason. They got all the amenities. 
And also they got the, you know, the guys that don't really play anymore that can just come in town and get a lift, which will bring guys around too. So it's just really special what they're doing there. Real quick, Johnny, uh, our special teams coach is more of an off the field role. And it's called game changer. He's not an on the field role. Uh, I believe his name is what? Chris Couch. I'm not mistaken. Mm, that sounds right. I'll take a look. Chris I, Couch. I think it's Chris Couch. Um, what do you think about that? The special teams, um, off the field type role. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, Chris Couch. I think it's an interesting twist for sure. You know, traditionally we're used to having him you know, down there with us, and and um, but it seems like it's more of a hands off, like schematic approach, um, more of an observer. Um, I haven't been up there to see any of the spring practices or see how any of that stuff is running, but. Um, I'm excited to get up there for the spring game and just check out the special teams and, and see how they're operating. Uh, it seems I mean, it's like an accurate cool. title. <laughs> you said what? Sorry. I said it's an accurate title. You guys are game changers, and I'm just glad that there's a coach that recognizes it now. Nick's about to go full fan up, right? for punters, man. It, it took a decade of campaigning, Johnny, but we're being recognized. We finally he included himself in the community. You see that? <laughs> hey, hey, listen, the, the train conductor is part of the community, isn't he? How, like, Dan, real quick, how far you think Nick can punt a ball? Um, I think if he has – if Nick punted the ball five times, I think that he could punt it a combined 50 yards. I like I'm getting, I'm getting so, private like, training I think lessons. I think there's going to be, like, one that you might get, like, 15 and I, and I have some. I have some time to get ready for the, for the punt. So I'm going to have Johnny – uh, or Tommy, give me or Jeremy, give me some pointers. Um, I will put on a performance. I think the uh, the lack of flexibility in my hip flexors might yeah, cause I feel like that'd be a pretty uh, big, some lack big of distance of punting, to begin yeah. with. Uh, the hamstrings are also kind of tight, so right. we're not starting from a great yeah. place. But I think there is improvement to be had. How did you insert yourself in the community? Off. I want to know how he inserted himself in the punter community, like just for being a fan. Johnny, am I part of the punting community? <laughs> Perfect time for you to cut out. That's a, a terrible <laughs> perfect time. To, it's a, a perfect time, time for your. Your... Did it <laughs> cut out? No. Yeah, it sure cut did. out. It was good. I know you yeah. about the lie, Johnny. So I'm glad you cut out. Yeah, even the camera knew I was telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, no. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, what, what do you I'm think about you our are the community, community, man? Oh, you are man. the community. Ah, uh, yes. We I would never be mentioned at all if it weren't for you. Let's go. Nick's well, you're part you, of the Twitter community. You were you were the community. offensive MVP in 2015, so I think that you were going to be mentioned a lot. What was it 86 times you were mentioned in, in a season? Yeah, most punting yards ever. <laughs> That's not even a thing we we're celebrating, Johnny. It's like actually it was depressing for us as fans. <laughs> it's not a good thing celebrating it. I was celebrating. We think running about, out of gifs, though. What do you think about punting room right now? Um, are you are you, are you uh, a familiar with those guys at all i am yeah um yeah me and tommy spent last offseason training in gainesville um so you know we got the chance to work with all those guys up close one-on-one -on -one. um jeremy himself dude he's got a lot of talent man he's got a, he's got a big leg and he's working on some of the technical aspects and um you know all those aussie guys when they transition it's a slightly different game um the game speed is different trying to get used to you know that atmosphere it's just something they're not really used to but the talent's there for sure with, with him and, um, you know, the long snappers. I got my little cousin there. He's competing for a job, and uh, he's doing great. I saw he got a couple catches at tight end in practice one day. And, New um, position. Yeah, I'm not sure does, what does he's he up have, Does he have uh, tummy speed? So he's he's interesting. He's a big guy. He's an all-state tight end and also the number one long snapper in the country. So he came in kind of wanting to do a little bit of both. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think they're starting to let him. I have a, a bloodline of special teamers, man. Game changers. Game changers. Uh, Johnny, I want to ask you, you had the experience of um, being on the same roster as your brother this uh, this past uh, NFL season. Uh, what was that experience like? That's probably the, one of the coolest things anyone can ever experience. I've officially played at every level of the game with my brother. Uh, from nice, man. Line football, man, in, in high middle school to, uh, you know, playing Pop Warner tackle ball to – playing high school together. Then, you know, we were at Florida together for two years and, and then we got to play on the same NFL team together. It's just, uh, it really is crazy. Um, last year I spent more time with him on the same roster, but this year is kind of a funny situation. I was a free agent. Tommy went down with COVID. They mm -hmm. said, Hey man, we need to come punt for Tommy. 
So the majority of the fan base that thought Tommy cut his hair and everybody was panicking all over Twitter and all this stuff because <laughs> <laughs> I came in like the day before the game. And so there was really nothing announced from a media standpoint. So everyone was like, what is it? What's going on? So, yeah, man, it was real cool, man. You can't really make that make that stuff up. So we did the jersey swap do? and all that. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you what do you do um, just to stay ready? Like when when you're a free agent, like you can get a call, especially with COVID the past two seasons. Um what are you doing just to stay ready? And, you know, Tennessee calls you and it's like, hey, uh, we need you to be here Tuesday for a physical and you might have to kick on Saturday or Sunday. Oh, that example is not even doing it justice on how much notice Tennessee gave me. I was uh, sitting in my apartment in Baltimore. My agent calls me, says, hey, what are you doing in about an hour? I said, uh, nothing, just hanging out, about to get dinner. Just pack a duffel bag, you're going to Tennessee, you're playing for the Titans this week. I was like, what? So I left everything behind, packed a quick duffel bag, jumped on, uh, jumped on uh, Uber to the airport, and, and headed to Tennessee. So you just always got to be ready, especially with all this COVID stuff, man. It's it's made free agency such a big part of the game compared to what it used to be. Um, there's a lot more shuffling around, a lot more moving parts. Um, so it's just really is crazy. It's hectic. Yeah, I played for four different teams this past year, and mm-hmm. um, it's been nuts. So. Uh, any, uh, any idea of what, uh, this upcoming season looks like for you yet, or still waiting to yeah, see approach? Still working, still working through it. So I'm going through free agency now. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what the best fit for me is going to be. Um, you know, when you're a punter, they only have one guy on every roster and sometimes can be a big patience thing. Um, and a lot of waiting around. So, you know, kind of that spot opens up to where you can just play. Um, you know, one of my buddies, uh, <laughs> he worked at Best Buy for about four years. And then he finally got his shot and became the highest paid long snapper in the NFL. Um, so it's just, it's such a crazy business, especially for specialists, because uh, there's no backups. Um, there's really no opportunities. Uh, so you're either a guy that's kind of in one place for 15 years or you're a journeyman, kind of like myself, who's just kind of, you know, bounced around and played at different teams and, and filled different holes. So, um, and, yeah. And just the, the pressure of that, too. It's like, listen, you might be a guy on a team for 12 years, but you have, uh, two bad games and it's, Hey, we'll find somebody else. You know, you a kicker misses a, a two or three field goals and an extra points. Like, Hey, you're a free agent on Monday. Exactly. Yeah. There's not much leeway. Um, it's such a competitive business and, and, you know, a lot of the reputation of the coaches rides on the players and how they perform. Mm. So um, they're going to look out for themselves and make a move as soon as they can to, you know, you know, keep things right. Of the, of the jerseys you've collected, which one is your favorite now? <laughs> Honestly, one of the favorite ones I have is from Marcel Harris. No okay. knock to the one that I got from Tommy, but Marcel, <laughs> no, no, definitely not my brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely not his. But uh, yeah, me and Marcel were roommates at Florida, uh, both mm-hmm. Orlando guys. So we competed against each other. He went to Dr. Phillips, I went to Boone. Uh, so he was our crosstown rival. Uh, so I played against against him in high school, and then we got up to Florida, and we were roommates together. And and then you know getting that first jersey from him when I was a rookie in the NFL was just something I won't forget. So that was a cool swap oh. for sure. Muschamp wasn't the greatest coach of all time, but he definitely wasn't the greatest of like room matchup. Like that didn't even make sense. <laughs> Why are you room? Ruin- all right, but, but, but. I just want to say listen, that real quick, Johnny. Listen, no, no, no. If we're gonna talk about rooming situations, the house that you guys had with Will Greer and Austin Harden, that was a that was popping. I got some questions. We don't need to get. We don't need to get into that one. That was a house. no. I got some questions. Well, I Will, Will did- stories about that place on here. Will Will did the uh, bar stool walk through that that Florida was not happy he did uh, mm. of that house. Yeah, that's they had they had the whole bar stool crew come in there and film our house and do all that. It's probably better you weren't in that video, Tommy. It's probably it's how you got time. caught, huh? No, <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I got some stories about that place. We had we had such a good time together in that house, man. It was it was fun. Yeah, at one point Tommy moved in there when. Uh, when Austin Harden moved out and Will moved out, Tommy moved in, and um, yeah, we had a good time. Wasn't Clay there for a while? Your your older brother? Yeah, he was. Um, he was trying to become a doctor, living with you hooligans. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, he he was. That was worse than a frat house. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that much. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but he actually just officially became a doctor. So uh, congrats to him. He's nice, now starting. Big congrats to Doctor Townsend. Yeah. He's doing orthopedic surgery, so he'll be giving us all Ooh. hip replacements. I might need one after I punt. Yeah, I'll get you a discount. You need it before <laughs> you punt. You. <laughs> I might need that too. I might need it both times. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Johnny, thanks so much for, for coming on the show. 
uh, today. It's a pleasure to have you back on. Uh, remind everybody where they can uh, where they can follow you uh, and follow the foundation and and just learn everything about the awesome work that you're doing. For sure. Yeah, we got some awesome projects coming up. Um, yeah, I'm working hand, hand in hand with Shan. So we got a $50,000 renovation to their outdoor healing garden, which is going to be mm. a great space. Um, it's uh, at the pediatric infusion clinic there where the patients can go outside and receive infusions and, and catch some Florida sun and kind of break up the monotony of their day. But um, you can help support all that this Thursday, spring game tailgate. Uh, yeah, we're going to be there 3.30 to 7.30. All the info to register is in my social medias at Johnny Townsend Foundation on Facebook and Instagram. Um, all the links are there. Awesome, dude. Well, we'll be on the lookout. Uh, I don't think – well, Nick will be there. Uh, Corey and I won't be able to make it up this uh, this Thursday, but I'll definitely be on the lookout for that silent auction uh, stuff and, and put in a bid or two. So um, absolutely appreciate your time, Johnny, and we'll, uh, we'll chat with you soon, my friend. Best of luck in the NFL this season. For sure. Thanks, I'll make guys. Sure to, I'll make sure to get there Thursday, Johnny, and uh, bring a donation with me. I think it's really admirable and really cool uh, what you've been doing since you yeah. left Florida um, for Shans and, and, and for everything your foundation is doing. So happy to help, and uh, I'll see you Thursday. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's been really cool just with hosting all the former players of this event. Uh, there's some guys that have come out of the woodworks that I just never would have expected to talk to. Um, you know, guys like I was talking to Chris Rainey the other day. I grew up, like, watching him on TV. Oh, I like this, bro. You know what I mean? Like idolizing a guy like that. And he's hitting me up saying, Hey man, I'm registering to come support, gonna see all the former guys. And it's pretty cool. So it's really it's really great. Is, is Major Wright coming? He texted me today, so he was gonna be up in town up to, up in town Thursday. Yeah, Major Wright will be there. He's gonna bring up some of his books and do book signing. Uh James Bates will be there. He's gonna feature some of his artwork. Um, mm -hmm. we got all the former guys involved, man. It's gonna be a really cool event. Excited, right. excited to hear about that, man. Um keep doing your thing, uh yeah. Danny. Yeah, keep doing your thing, man. It's dope. Yeah, I wish y'all could make it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. there. I, I would have made it, man. Game. Billy ain't changed it, changed it, changed the, uh, the spring game day. I was there. I had a tailgate and all myself, Johnny. Yeah, going yeah, down, yeah, baby. Yeah, everybody was bummed about switching that from Saturday to Thursday. So, yeah, we was about to hang out. Steve Miguel, we we're gonna be at the same corner, same time, and then Billy changed the date, bro. <laughs> oh man. Next time, felt like I didn't feel like going up on an ACC primetime slot, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> bro, there's salt. There's a, a lot of salt from the guys no, that don't man. live in town, Johnny. A lot of salt. Yeah. But uh, all right, Johnny, we appreciate it, brother. We'll talk to you soon. All right, boys. Talk soon. Thanks, brother.